We're going to make a hinge assembly in this tutorial. First I'm going to show you the hinge. Front plane, let's sketch a line and then let's see, wrap a circle around it. It doesn't really matter too much at this point. Let's go with two inches for here and a diameter of, let's see, radius of 0.5. Diameter of one. I only need 270 degrees of this circle, so I'm just going to sketch a line to stop my trim command. So now I only have 270 degrees. We will extrude this using the thin feature. Make sure we are on the inside of our line at a thickness of 0.25 inches. We will go away from the camera 4 inches. And there's our there's the start of our hinge. Now, we want to cut out some of this material, two instances of it. So on the top plane, let's sketch, go normal to, using our corner rectangle command, start down here, and line up with this edge. Make this height dimension of one unit and if it is constrained with this edge right here you are ready to, to cut, extrude cut. Uh, by default you need to change it to through all and it starts going down so we need to change the direction to up. You're gonna pattern a couple times in this part. Here's the first time. You want a linear pattern. The features to pattern is this cut. So if we select this face, see it says cut extrude, it will select cut extrude direction one of the pattern, we want to pattern in this direction from forward back. Uh, two instances and the distance in between is two inches. And I hit enter and it cut another hole or another section two inches away. Alright, now we need to make four holes and with uh, the hole wizard SOLIDWORKS already has several predefined holes that are already set up for you. We're going to use a countersink, ANSI inch, flathead screw 82, screw size 10 with a through haul end condition. That is the type of hole. Where would we want one located? Let's just click on it. We're going to throw one right there. Now, if we want, we can go to normal to, well, I'm going to hold ALT and hit my arrow so it rotates it back this way as it shows in the book. Now we can dimension this hole, or as far as positioning goes, from here to here. That is, let's see, that is 0.3 units. From here to here, that is 1 unit. We have it positioned where we want it. Click OK. We have the type of hole defined as we want it. Click OK. So SolidWorks added a neat little hole for us in one motion as opposed to making several cuts and, sw and uh, revolve cuts and whatnot. So we need to pattern this four times. So select linear pattern, features to pattern, this hole. Direction one Let's go this way, distance of 0.9 inches, and we want to change the direction. Direction 2, let's go down. So let's select this, two instances, distance of 2, and we want them to go into the part, so let's change the direction. Now we have four holes in the base of our hinge. As far as the hinge goes, that is basically it. I'm going to change this to black so you can see it better. And to make it look a little bit more like a hinge, I will add a brass color, uh, material to it. It's pretty shiny. That is the hinge. I'm going to save this as uh, just on my desktop. Hinge. Okay. Uh, minimize this and open a new part. With two parts of the hinge we still need a pin. 
So on the front plane, select a sketch, or make a sketch rather, of a cylinder. And the dimensions of that are 0.5 diameter extruded, 4 inches. On the front of this, let me change this. On the front, we need to make a cap sketch, a circle with a diameter of 1. Let's extrude it 0.25 inches. And here's our cap. Just for a contrast in color, I'm going to assign this material, uh, let's say copper. I it's not necessarily copper in the real world, but just to you know, change the color a little bit. Save as. We will save this part as the pin. Once we have these two parts completed and saved, we can make a new assembly. I'm going to pin this open because I'm going to use a couple of instances of this. The first one you place, I clicked hinge. The first one you drop, it's going to be fixed. You can't really move it unless you specify. The second one you can move. We're just going to drop it there. And you can keep clicking, but we don't need any more. Let's go to pin. We only need one pin, so we're going to click it right there. Now, this one, uh, as I said a minute ago, it it's flexible. It's what's uh, it's floating, is what it's called. This one is fixed. This says the selected item is fixed. It cannot be moved. To change that, if you want to, you right click on it and go to float. Now you can move it. I'm going to undo my last action and go to fix. Now I can't move this. So we're going to be basing our hinge off of this piece. We need to somewhat rotate this. So if you hold control, I'm sorry, not control. No, oh, where'd it go? Well, I lost my other piece. So if you do hold control and click and drag, you can duplicate your part. Um, but if you right click and drag, you can twist the piece until you get it in somewhat the right orientation. That's how it's going to line up. And here's where we'll be introduced to mates. You want to mate, uh, let's say, this edge, and you want it to be touching this edge. Control select the two, click mate. Now a coincident mate appears, which is correct. That means that they are along the same plane. Now you can move them and click OK. And you can move these pieces all over the place, but they're still going to remain in that same plane. So now you need to center them about this uh, this center axis. If you select this, select this, the concentric uh, mate appears as well. Click OK. And now this piece is confined by two mates, the first of which was these two sides on the same plane, the second of which is these two con uh, uh, concentric circles sharing the same center point. So no matter what you do, they are going to be perfectly lined up. Now we need to add this pin in there. So we can just move it wherever, but if we were to select this circle, or this cylinder, and this concentric face, it will go in the same concentric mate. Now, no matter what, it's, it's still in the same, has the same center axis, but we want it to stop somewhere, so we can select this face, and select this face. So now this pin is completely inside the hinge. We are done with our mates. And now we have a working hinge. Now you can add some restrictions because as of right now I don't have a depth restriction or an angle, angle restriction so it can go all the way through which is not what we're looking for. Uh, if you go to move component you can say collision detection stop at collision and let's just move this down until it stops at the collision. See, it stopped when it hit that. You can leave it there, you can do whatever you want, you can ch add another mate, but that is essentially uh, 
just a simple hinge that is in your book and you will be using this to create a I guess what looks like a little doggy door but there's your hinge <laughs>